I request your attention to the recitation of the Holy Quran. Honorable speaker, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and salam alaikum. I, Bakhtavir Iftakhar, on behalf of President Gas, Air Marshal Faris Hussain Khan, formally welcome you all to today's event. The guest lecture is titled From Crisis to Opportunity Harnessing Climate Change for Pakistan's Sustainable Future. We shall first see a brief introductory video showcasing the scope of Gas's activities and a message from President Gas.
Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guest speaker today is Dr. Adil Najam, who is a leading public scholar whose teaching, research, and public engagement focuses on issues of global public policy, especially those related to conservation, environment, sustainable and human development, and climate change in the global south. He has recently been appointed as president of the World Wildlife Fund International. He is also the inaugural dean emeritus at the Frederick S. Pardee School of Global Studies at Boston University and a professor of international relations and of earth and environment. Dr. Najam previously served as vice chancellor of the Lahore University of Management Sciences. He has also been the director of the Boston University Pardee Center for the Study of the Longer Range Future. He has also taught at MIT and the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, Tufts University. Professor Najam was a co-author for the third and fourth assessments of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, work for which the scientific panel was awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize for advancing the public understanding of climate change science. He has written over a hundred scholarly papers and book chapters. His recent work includes the Pakistan National Human Development Report on Youth and the Living Indus Initiative. He has served on multiple boards, including as chair of the Luke Hoffman Institute and South Asian Network of Development and Environment Economics. He has frequently served as advisor to international organizations, NGOs, and governments across the world. In 2010, he was awarded Sitara Imtiaz by the President of Pakistan. It is an honor to have you here at CASA. I would now call upon the moderator, Air Marshal Muhammad Ashfaq Arai, advisor at CAS, to take over today's proceedings. Over to you, sir. Dr. Adil Hajan, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take this opportunity to once again welcome you on behalf of Team Cash and President Cash. I'll start uh, with a tweet from our young researchers, Ms. Shada, yesterday. In her tweet, she wrote, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation who can do something about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, climate change is a pressing global issue with far-reaching impacts on the environment and human societies. According to the Global Climate Risk Index 2021, Pakistan is ranked the eighth most vulnerable country despite its low carbon emissions of less than 1%. Pakistan's vulnerability is driven by its geographic location, socio-economic conditions, and institutional capacity. The country is home to nearly 7,000 glaciers, which cover over about 13% of its land mass. Since 1997, melting glaciers, because of high temperatures, have caused ice mass reduction by 36%. This is leading to devastating consequences, including floods and landslides, reduced wa water availability, and loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services. Temperatures rise is also altering precipitation patterns, leading to irregular rainfall, which impacts agriculture, accessibility to water, and intensifies the possibility of flooding as well as drought events. Moreover, Pakistan's coastal regions are extremely susceptible to sea level rise, storm surges, and erosion. The increased water levels threaten human settlements, fisheries, and ecosystems, while worsening financial difficulties and food insecurity for all those localities. These pressing challenges pose significant threats to Pakistan's economy, energy supply, food security, water availability, and the well-being of millions of individuals, 
thereby impacting every facet of human and national security. The challenges are further aggravated by a lack of awareness, public indifference, non-implementation of rules and procedures, and poor governance. The gravity of the situation necessitates urgent attention and the formulation of a comprehensive plan for adaptation and mitigation. Swift action is imperative to address these issues effectively and safeguard the nation's socio-economic stability, environmental sustainability, and the overall welfare of its populace. This requires finding uh, solutions to some of the questions such as how can Pakistan address its environmental challenges and check out, uh, chalk out implementation strategies to mitigate and adapt to the growing impact of climate change? What opportunities does the Green Alliance with the United States holds for the country? How can Pakistan take a leading role in shaping the climate discussion among nations in the global south? Do debt for nature swaps have the potential to alleviate Pakistan's economic and environmental duress? How can emerging technologies be leveraged to enhance protective and corrective measures in combating climate change? Today, we are fortunate to have with us a renowned scholar, Dr. Adil Najam, who has extensive expertise in climate change and related subjects. He brings a wealth of experience gained through practical work, teaching, and scholarly contributions. He understands Pakistan's educational standards, the public attitude towards collective issues, lack of awareness at all levels, the governance system, absence of long-term planning, and ambiguity between authority and responsibility. Therefore, we expect that his recommendations would include something out of the box applicable in Pakistan's special situation. And this brings back to the tweet, the younger generation is realizing, but the decision making is with the older generation. And that is probably the unfortunate part. So I'll not take more time. Dr. Adil Najam, stage is yours. Uh, it's, a, it's a great honor and, and pleasure and delight to be here. Like, and I, I should say, I was saying to the, the president, who as I was walking in, those posters with my photograph, then I come into this room and I see Jilani Saab and all wonderful people that, that I, have, I have known and respected for so long, and that puts even more pressure. So, uh, so the pressure is on, but I am delighted, delighted to be here. Um, let me see if this will work. I hope it should. Um, as I said, gee, uh, by the way, a special thank to the young lady who read out my bio. Thank you very much uh, for embarrassing me. Uh, as, as you can see, my greatest skill in life is writing my own CV. Uh, <laughs> but just go up, introduce anything, that person must be very interesting. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you for, for having me. Uh, I want to take the, uh, the next um, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, to introduce some ideas. There's a number of friends here uh, who have heard me speak on some of these issues. Um, I will try not to repeat too much of that uh, because I, I actually, this is an experiment for me. I want to learn from you and I want to learn from that conversation. So I hope I'm amongst friends because I will make the mistake of trespassing into your territory. Uh, and I want to use this to help myself think more about the climate security link. Um, I have worked on it for quite a while. In 2001, I was the first book I published on uh, security, environment, and development. Um, and I'll, I'll put at least something from that. I've been trying to think and write about that um, for many years. Many people have. Many Many people have. I was, it was wonderful to see your video, maybe climate is one of those areas. But one of the questions, and I'm saying this before I start, um, is, Sangha uh, Manusha, I didn't see you earlier, uh, is, is really, what is that link? Right? It's one thing to just link everything with security because it gets more attention. Uh, but given the audience and given the place and given the room, 
um, I want to I, I want to do that, and that might mean that I will say things that may not be uh, you may not agree with or may not find convincing. If so, please let me know because that will make me me smarter. So that's really uh, what I want to do. Thank you also for the mention to the uh, WWF, uh, which is I'm now 11 years old in that, 11 days old uh, in, in, in that position. And you will see I've purposely not put that as one of my affiliations. I have put the uh, Jenna Center uh, because I'm speaking not, not really as WWF, but, uh, but, but as a Pakistani uh, tr trying to think about, uh, about these things. I want to raise three things. I want to raise three questions. I nearly always start with three questions. The questions are different. But questions are much more important than answers. Answers to koi can be I do not know of any great idea that did not start with a good question. Uh, the, the greatness is always in coming up with the question that changes the, the way we think and therefore the answer, answer this is. Um, three questions. The first one is, what is the climate telling us? Like that quote from uh, the young person quoting um, Secretary General who originally said that, uh, you know, what is the climate telling us? Not what climate scientists are telling us, right? As I mentioned, I worked on the IPCC. I've spent my life doing this. But when we look at the ke baar dekhte hain, what is the objective reality telling us? Right? Not what politicians are telling us, not what scientists, the future projections are telling us, not what... Uh, uh, newspapers are telling us, but what is the actual climate telling us? And there's a reason why I want to tell the story like this, because I have been arguing, and you will see this, that we are now in what I call the age of adaptation. And I'll come to that, but what is the climate telling us? Right? In a way, may I be thoda sa apko de Climate ne pishle hafte. What did the climate tell us last week? L last week was very, very interesting. The world record on the highest global temperature for one day, not in one place, for the, but for the world as a whole, was broken four times. Sunday till then was the highest recorded global temperature for the world, right? Not in a place. Sunday, Dunya mein. Pishla Sunday. Uh, Monday, that was broken. Tuesday was equaled Monday and Wednesday it was broken again. By Thursday, I stopped noticing. <laughs> I can promise you this summer it will be broken multiple times. Now, again, part of that, the signs for climate people here, there is something called El Nino. We are going through an El Nino cycle. El Nino cycles happen. El Nino cycles push uh, average temperatures higher. Can, if climate is already pushing that higher, Right? That's the part ki how much of this is not natural and how much of this is man-made. If climate has already pushed it higher and now El Nino comes, it goes higher. Right? So what is the climate telling us? I've spent too much time on that, but that's question one. The question two is what I introduced. What does it mean to live in the age of adaptation? I'll, I'll, I'll again, because there may not all be subject specialists here, in climate uh, science, there are two essential terms. Uh, in climate treaties, in climate negotiation, in climate policy, basically we've broken it up into two things. One is called mitigation, one is called adaptation. Simple idea. Mitigation is what do you do to keep the problem from happening? Right? You can apply it to anything, politics, whatever. What do you do so that the problem does not happen? Right? Adaptation is if the problem does happen, how do you adapt to it? So till now, from 1992, Rio Summit, Jamshed uh, Marker Saab, and so on and so forth, the politics of climate change has essentially been and remains a politics of mitigation. Mitigation means what can we do taake ye masla na bane? What can we do is essentially very simple. It is carbon. There is one box in the periodic table. It is called C. Carbon emissions. That's why everything you, you hear about climate is about emission. Emission come karna, air conditioner emission come karna, heating emission come karna, energy come use karna. So as long as you are talking about carbon mitigation, you are essentially talking about energy. Right? Because that's the basic place which has changed the world. We have this wonder drug called fossil fuels. Right? It's one of the most amazing things that happened. 
because an energy source came that was easy to transport. It could be, uh, you know, hydrocarbons could be liquid, could be solid, could be gas. They're easy to use. They can be used in every way for about 120 years. We had this super material called hydrocarbons. But one of the results of that is carbon emissions. So mitigation is how do you reduce your emissions because that is changing the world climate. Now, because we have failed in the negotiation part, right? the next COP will be COP28. What that means is this will be 28th consecutive year, quarter century se zada ho gaya. Okay, we have chosen not to come to a treaty. Right? Sorry, Jalain sir, but we can talk about that. That's, that's essentially the North-South game. We have made a mela bana liya hai. every year, we go there, we say what we, they know we will say, they say what we know they will say. We come back with a little lollipop, ye wala fund, wo wala fund, and we keep going. <laughs> I'm, I hope I'm my friends. Right? So that's mitigation. Adaptation is, ki yaar, if the thing actually starts happening, what do we do? Right? Jab climate change hoti hai, when the flood hits. So now you get a 2010. Now you get a 2022. Then how do you adapt? The good news on adaptation and the age of adaptation is that we as a species are very good at adaptation. In fact, the reason we are sitting here so comfortably amongst other species is because one of our superpowers as human beings is the ability to adapt, which other species don't have as much. All species adapt. Right? So, rains, I get an umbrella. Adaptation. Suddenly it gets cold, I wear a sweater. Adaptation, right? So we are good at adapting to new situations, finding solutions. The problem with adaptation and the politics of adaptation, therefore, is that adaptation always has a cost. The umbrella, uski koi price hogi. The sweater, uski koi price hogi. Pakki chat, uski koi price hogi. Right? That, in a nutshell, is all the politics of climate change. If you are a vulnerable country that hasn't given done much emissions, you say that yeah, emission to many kini or adaptation ki cost me. Therefore, you who have done it pay. If you are an emitting country, you say you don't say it, but you keep quiet, but you say, let me just make my own city more livable. Because my first responsibility is to my people. Right? And that is this net zero value business that's now happening. That is, in a nutshell, the politics of adaptation and mitigation. And what I'm arguing, I'm sorry I've taken too much time on this slide. What does it mean to live in what I have been calling and writing about the age of adaptation? The countries like Pakistan, to me, should be thinking about adaptation. Because you in know, English, don't cut your nose to spite your face. Kia jisne marzi hai. Ghar mere bande ka bana jab flood aana. Right? At that point, you don't say that carbon is right? And finally, this question, is climate changing, uh, does this mean, what does this mean for our meaning of secure and insecure? Security is a link. I haven't put it here, but the real question is, a lot of people are, have been very concerned. It's nearly now a certainty to link climate and security. What is not a certainty is, we are still trying to struggle, struggle what is the link? If everything is security, then nothing is security. Right? So one reason why people want to link their issue to security is there's this assumption that security has money. So if I can make my issue a security issue, my issue will also get some resources. So clearly, everything cannot be security. And I am hoping we can think together, okay, when does an issue become a security issue? I want to challenge also the idea that security is also not just because it is military related or it is war related. Right? That we know historically that security is more than war. Right? War is the ultimate failure of security. Also the ultimate failure of diplomacy. But there are multiple things that are security issues and we want to understand that. And, and my, what I'm trying to put there not as a new thing is, is, is but, but this idea that we should be thinking about not just security, we should be thinking about insecurity. One of the things I've learned in life is that actually security only becomes important when you are insecure. 
Secure people and secure countries nearly never talk about security. I saw this in the financial crisis in the US. crisis now everyone is thinking about security. I saw this in COVID. Suddenly now it's security. Right? When people feel threatened, that is why actually countries like us think more about security. Because security, thinking about security is a factor of how insecure you are, which is why you have to bolster your defenses to, to meet it. Anyhow, I'm sorry, many professors are the I'll, I'll try to try to try to tone it down here. But I wanted to, in this audience, I really wanted to spend time on those questions because they are there for a reason, not, not anyhow. I have a proposition. The proposition essentially is that in the age of adaptation, it is fundamentally changes the nature of climate policy as well as politics. It invites us to reconsider how we conceptualize the two. That is too many words to ever put on one screen, so let me highlight what I'm saying. First, I'm saying there's a fundamental change. Change may shock you. Change, change is not unusual. Change is a static in life. But certain periods in life are fundamentally and structurally changing. I have a different presentation I'll be giving later this week which is on, on, on global disorder. I essentially argue that we are living through a time of fundamental change. Change is not a big change. But there are certain times that fundamentally change. Fundamental ka kya hai? Fundamental ka hai? Not only that thing changes, but other things change because of it. Structural ka kya hai? Ke that it has to be a change which changes the structures of decision making and action. And what we are seeing now is not simply that power is up or down. It is between technology, between climate, between geopolitics. We are seeing a fundamental redrafting. And when you have a fundamental redrafting, the issue is you don't know how it will be redrafted. Right? So the past is not a good indicator of the future in times of structural and fundamental change. So my first point is that it is fundamental. The second is that it changes both policy and politics. I've already said something about it, so let me not go into it. And finally, I invite us to reconsider this meaning of conceptualizing climate and, 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 and security. And again, I, I do this hoping I'm among friends and you will, you will forgive me for saying things that, that, that may not be um, entirely polite. Let me start with Paris. Right? Uh, Mary Valley, which is Paris, is 2015, the Paris conference. <laughs> Paris ka matlab badi siti hoti. But you've heard a lot about Paris. Uh, Paris was this major conference. Out of that came the so-called Paris Agreement, which is a wonderful document because it's not an agreement. It's not a treaty. It has zero, not one, implementable legal requirement. Right? That was mostly because John Kerry, representing the U.S., said our Congress will never accept anything. So it is essentially a set of ideas that countries said we will try our best to do. But it is significant. Uh, I should tell this, uh, especially for some of the folks who are here, I am a creature of the COPS, the climate uh, negotiation process, uh, the conference of the parties. Uh, I was at COP minus two, COP minus one, COP zero, when they were not called COPS. Uh, this was 91, 91, 90. Uh, and, and, and then um, um, uh, had the great pleasure of spending time with uh, Jimshed Marker, who was our ambassador and the head of the G77 at the Rio Earth Summit. So I was at every COP from before there was a COP until Copenhagen. Copenhagen, you would remember, is the one that everyone said was a great failure. I think it was the best COP ever because the countries actually tried. They tried and failed, but they tried. But anyhow, at that point, I put an embargo on myself, no more COPs. In Paris, I broke the embargo on the request of our then prime minister, attended in 15 minutes, I realized I shouldn't have, and, and put the embargo back again. Two things came out of Paris. Right? I, I don't need to go into the treaty, but there are two things that came out that you would recall. Lombasa document that, that, that was negotiated, two numbers came out. Pella number was this. I used to have a lot of fun with this slide because I used to ask, what is that number? And most people would start to count because we haven't seen a note of that, that magnitude. That's $100 billion. The thing to tell you about this number was, so this was the number that was agreed that this would be spent per year by the last year uh, on climate mitigation and adaptation in developing countries. Now, everyone knew at that point that these are aspirations. And in a way, the number is spent, but it is spent by the farmer who had a house 
बिकॉज उसने तो घर बनाना है ना दे नॉट गोइंग टू वेट फॉर मनी टू कम इन मेरा घर बह गया वट डू आई डू वट आई डू इज आई रीबिल्ड माई हाउस आई टेक द मनी आई वो सेविंग फॉर माई डॉटर्स वेटिंग और आई टेक माई दो वेशी एंड सेल दैम and i rebuilt because i can't just sit there waiting for the international system to give me anything and that is why for example this year you are seeing an, an uptick in gdp this is natural after every disaster gdp will go up usme koi magic nahi hai gdp is essentially how much money is spent in an economy after disasters invariably more money has to be spent you saw that after covid saw that after earthquakes you see that and so on and so forth because people will spend money so it, gdp doesn't differentiate between good spending and bad spending you spend on heroin or you spend on 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 charity both are counted the same way so that was 100000 100 billion the story of this number now is that what looked like a very big number now looks like an amazingly small number like the, the, i've been using this slide for many years and it used to the room used to say wow ye to itne paise kabhi bhi nahi aayenge now my climate people look at this and say isse kya hoga <laughs> so the cost of the pakistan flood alone which wasn't just because of climate like let's use that the most conservative estimate is 32 billion the world bank's estimate was something like 60 billion right yeah 100 billion but let me try to put this number in context of security right this is ab yeah, mai i'll start losing friends cost of afghanistan war to the us anyone टू ट्रिलियन बड़ा नंबर है छोटा नंबर बहुत ही अफोर्डेबल नंबर है मठा जहा नंबर है इसके तो मल्टे ले लेना चाहिए सॉरी आई टेल यू वाई कॉस्ट ऑफ कोविड नॉट कॉस्ट टू इकोनॉमी एक्चुअल मनी प्रिंटेड एंड डोल्ड आउट आई लिव इन द यूएस इट टुक द यूएस कांग्रेस नाइन डेज नाइन डेज टू इन्वेंट ए ट्रिलियन डॉलर फाइव डेज टू स्पेंड सिर्फ नौ दिन की बहस के बाद ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स वर प्रिंटेड इन फाइव डेज उन्होंने कहा जी खर्च हो गए सारे बिकॉज दो चेक्स वर रिटर्न आउट बाय द एंड ऑफ कोविड द न्यू मनी प्रिंटेड जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड इज सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव ट्रिलियन दैट्स वाई आई कंपेयर इट टू अफगानिस्तान द पॉइंट आई एम मेकिंग इज नॉट आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू स्कोर पॉइंट हेयर अमरीका पे और वट एवर आई एम सेंग के वेन इशूज आर एक्चुअल सिक्योरिटी इशूज द नंबर गेम चेंजेस in fact i was here is my proposition a security issue is defined as an issue which is existential and because it is existential the question of cost becomes irrelevant security pe paise isliye nahi kharch hote ki wo ki wo security hai wo isliye hote hain ki assumption is ki ye masla jo hai meri baka ka it is existential and because it is existential phir paise puchne ka koi fayda nahi hai first you save your life then you figure out how to pay for it right that is why covid may panch din mein paise kharch hue nau din mein paise aaye not just covid uh, the financial crisis i was talking about 4.5 trillion right so all across the world when societies actually believe that something is actually threatening them their existence and this this khalsab is very logical agar mere bachcha kal bimar ho jaye my first thing is i'm going to do everything to save my child uske baad i will ask ke paise kitne lage aur mujhe kya bechna padega right that to me is the lever of when you are have a security issue or not and covid really was a security issues aapne covid mein jitni impossibilities ki hain you know things that have were impossible for covid suddenly in one day became possible main aapse kahun ki yaar kal 3 din ke liye sari airport duniya ko band kar de impossible okay <laughs> right germany is saying to italy main aapko mask nahi dunga <laughs> eu or no eu right airports closed no one on the road literally aapne you know kisi ke kareeb nahi jana mere kareeb kisi ne nahi aana now again i'm not trying to be facetious what i'm saying is security issues are security issues for a reason and we need to go to that bottom line reason ke what makes a security issue and why we treat security issues differently and the essential argument is because there is existential you the social contract is you say to society ke dekho agar ye kaam nahi hua then everything else will fail right 
Again, I'm taking too long, but the argument on climate and security is that there are some aspects of climate that are existential. And that is why they need a security approach. Right? So that was number one. I need to cut myself down. The other number that came out of Paris is more important. And that were these two numbers, 1.5 and 2. You've probably heard them. Basically, the climate people wanted 2 degree. Let's do policies so that we don't cross the 2 degree barrier. A number of small countries or vulnerable countries, Pakistan was not amongst them, but the small island states, Bangladesh, they said, ki, yaar, 1. 2 is too late. If the world temperature changes by 1.5, we, we have an existential threat. Right? My, 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 fam my most favorite example is Van Vanuatu. So I don't know how many of you study Vanuatu. Vanuatu is one of the small island states in the South Pacific. Jahaz aata hai, population bad jati hai. Jahaz jata hai, population kam ho jati hai. Itna chota sa hai. Itna bhi chota nahi hai, lekin chota hai. Vanuatu has now a treaty with New Zealand, formal treaty with New Zealand, that in the event of climate change impacting the island, meaning it goes down, sea level rise ki wajah se, all of the population of Vanuatu will move to New Zealand. The problem is that Bangladesh ki population will go Right? Or Pakistan ki will go So that's, that's existential. That's literally existential. So... Small countries said, Ki ji, we can't do 2, 2 is too late, we must do 1.5. So the treaty says we will, we, will, we will aim for 2 and try for 1.5. At this point, and I'm very sad to say this, there is no science in the world. I, I wish I was wrong. I will give anything in my life to be wrong on this. I know of no actual science that can show me a path from here to below 1.5. That, that is why we are in the age of adaptation. That is why while we continue thinking about mitigation, we have to start thinking about adaptation. Let me, let me suggest why that is so. Let me suggest why we are in the, the age of adaptation by saying, would you make a clear question? Remember 2020? I, I don't know aap se kitno ne likhe the, but I spent most of it writing memos that started with this is a year like no other. Uh, thank you for doing this. Very difficult. Flana, flana. In 2022, diseases hit the world. One was COVID, the other was Zoom. Zoom was a big disease. My only good thing that came out of Zoom is that you can put these backgrounds around you. So that is me. Me in 2020 teaching my class on sustainable development, the background tells you what I was teaching, but that's not what I'm saying. Let me tell you what else was happening in 2020. Right? So while we were talking about this, very much like now, in January 2020, hottest January ever recorded since we've been recording temperatures. February, second hottest ever. March, second hottest ever. April, second hottest ever since we have started to count. Karna shuru kiya. So this is for the globe as a whole, not a place, right? May, hottest ever. June, hottest ever. July, second hottest. August, second hottest. September, hottest. October, hottest. You get the point, right? December, with thirty C respite, will get eighth hottest. This is what I'm saying. Let's listen to what the climate is saying. The climate is saying, it's already happening. Climate change is no longer a future issue. Let me put, I think, this is a tweet from April of 22. Last year, on 29th of April, I, I tweeted, I calculated nearly a billion people, one billion people on that day across South Asia only were seeing temperatures of over 100 degree Fahrenheit, meaning in most cases, many cases, 117 Fahrenheit. It is not that we can't do 100. Um, South Asian, hai, hum garmi bhi kar sakte. but not on April 29, not for a billion people, right? Um, I was just hearing about olive growing in Pakistan. Uh, olive ka saath hoga, we don't know what happens at this, that, 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 that place, right? The farmer has to, the aap agar farmer ki science dekhe, sadiyon ka uska database hai, jis pe wo base karta hai, ki mene is wak beej bona hai, is wak barish aegi. When that goes berserk, that is as bad as the flood. 
for the livelihood of that person, right? So that is what I'm saying. That climate is no longer a future issue. Climate is telling us this is happening now. Now you might say, "No, Professor Sahib, you're lying. There's no such thing as that." Let me put some numbers. I put again another embargo. I put on myself was that I will stop using graphs in the future. Hum climate wale, we always use these graphs: 2050, 2100, 2150. What I realized is that by doing that, we are telling people that we have time. Hai. So now I nearly always only use graphs in the past. Not what kya hoega kya, but hua kya. Let me show you. This is actual global temperature since we have been recording temperature. I hope people can see those lines. That is the 1.5 I was talking about, and then there is two. Right? And again, ye wo nahi hai ki kya hoga. This is what has actually been happening: 81, 97, 2001, 2014. Right? It stops at 2016. This year was the first time when we started touching 1.5. उसका ये मतलब नहीं है 1.5 हो गया क्योंकि वो एवरेज वाला चक्कर है. But the result is sort of in front of us. Now you may again say कि जी that is fine, that is global temperature. Global temperature तो मैंने नहीं देखा मैं तो इस्लाम बाद में हूँ. So let us look what's happening in place. You can choose whichever place you want. I've put the same data on a map. Ever since we have data for any place, this map tells you what is happening to the increase. right you can choose wherever you want to see and this will also tell you the emerging politics of climate change the real north south issue will also be seen but again what it says is that climate is no longer a future issue climate is happening now now not all of this may be climate there is el nino there is so on so forth but what is clear in the science is that human induced climate is pushing up the planet right and and this map in some ways tells you about the climate data and the political data in one uh, so that is really why it is a global issue and why this 1.5 number we need to come back to now some of you may be saying again i apologize for speaking long but some of you might be thinking ki yaar theek hai but 0.5 degree to bada chota hota hai right between when you came here this morning and when you will leave i imagine 0.5 degree change ho chuka ho that is true 0.5 degree in weather is insignificant 0.5 degree in climate is consequential weather or climate ka us then i was on this television thing and i was suggesting to them ki we need a better word for climate change in urdu because mausam jo hai wo weather bhi hai aur climate bhi hai but weather and climate are two separate, separate things right so especially those of you who are from the air force would know this there is a weather condition which is aaj kya and there is a climate condition which is over time kya right and if you have to be prepared you have to be prepared for four so point 5 in weather is significant what the, why is it significant by the way those colorful lines is another way of presenting the data i had how the world's weather has changed so this is one of the ipcc reports i also had something to do with the uh, ipcc okay what does point 5 do between friends right i won't go into all of it they can a point 5 degree change जो 1.5 और 2.5 का फर्क है एक्सट्रीम हीट गोज अप बाय 260 परसेंट टू हंड्रेड टू पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम इसका मतलब नहीं है टेम्परेचर 260 चला जाता है इसका ये है कि वट एवर चेंज विल हैपन एट टू एट 1.5 पॉइंट फाइव इट विल बी टू पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम्स मोर दैट चेंज राइट स्पीसीज लॉस ट्वाइस एज मच क्रॉप यूल्स टू टाइम्स Uh, sometimes back i did a study on pakistan ke uh, lower punjab upper sindh mein cotton or wheat ki crop pe kya farak padta hai uh, with this sort of thing we can talk about that so it is consequential and especially for developing countries that's where the security threats you can look at those numbers and what they mean for countries like our own uh, in thinking about that this is what brings me to this question and now we'll talk about security and then i promise to shut up uh, of the age of adaptation okay, what is the age of adaptation it is here it is now right what does climate mean in the age of adaptation let me first say how we got here i'll only be very quick first i think it's a failure of wisdom there is this argument ki ji science puri nahi it's one of the most facetious argument ever made i think this is an old graph between 1991 and 2012 13950 scientific papers were published on the subject only 24 of them rejected in any way the idea that global warming is human induced this number is even less today right so somehow you know we think ke har cheez ke do side hai har cheez ke do side nahi hote kai cheezon ke sirf ek side hota hai it's called the right side 
बट वेदर यू आर अ जर्नलिस्ट वेदर यू आर अ पॉलिटिशियन यू समहाउ फील के निजी दोनों साइड हमने देखने ऑन द साइंस इट इज अबाउट एज क्लियर एज इट इज ऑन ग्रेविटी देर इज लॉट्स ऑफ साइंटिफिक क्वेश्चन but the original is i won't go into this it's also a negotiation failure my apologies to say this jalani sahab and others but in fact we we have turned the climate negotiations into a mela it is repetitive people are now already planning for the negotiation 5 years from now i yearn for the time when <coughs> international negotiation was you gave someone a brief you knew your national interest go and sit there until you get an agreement and then come back this idea of constant negotiation and then the idea ke pura mela uske sath jayega there will be 30000 people there as if international treaty making is a spectator sport if you do that then every politician is playing to the gallery right they're thinking humne aaj tweet kya karna hai all the paraphernalia of serious decision making is taken out of that so it is a negotiation failure uh, five failures as i said of how we get there the third failure is that it's not only uh, those it is a vulnerability failure i won't go into this because you know this you don't need to read the graph this is the countries of the world on the left side is essentially who is hurt by climate kis ka asar kis pe pad raha hai on the right side where are the emissions coming from so wo jo ashfaq sahab baat kar rahe the na ki the point about sort of who's causing it and 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 who's suffering and that brings you to a moral dimension there's a reason why the next picture you will see is from standards and poor it's a financial agency ki vulnerability or risk kahan hai look at the colors and see ki who is causing versus who is at risk right and finally it is a political failure right and i'm i'm not trying to make a political point i'm not trying to make a political point but it's not a question of science not being there it's a question of politics having failed and 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 i know that that picture because it is trump sahab ki you know brings a smile but it's not just trump it's everyone it's 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 it's, it's everyone it is a political failure this is one of my favorite pictures this is from copenhagen this was i argue the last moment when serious leaders seriously were trying to do something you will see china is not there there is a whole story in barack obama's book of why china is not there लेकिन यूजली हेड्स ऑफ स्टेट डोंट डू दिस एट अ नेगोशिएशन क्योंकि पहले से एग्रीमेंट हो चुकी होती है दे कम फॉर द सॉर्ट ऑफ साइनिंग वगैरह राइट दिस वाज द सीरियसनेस के दिस वाज एट 3 एएम एट नाइट आल्सो राइट सो 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 एंड सो फॉर्थ एंड नाउ वी आर लेस टू वो जो पेरिस वाला है यू नो दिस वाज बिफोर द ग्लासगो के वी विल मेक अ विश राइट सो सो इट इज अ फेलियर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स माय अपॉलॉजीज फॉर द टाइम बट लेट मी लेट मी एंड विद जस्ट अ फ्यू वेरी क्विक स्लाइड्स i will take a few minutes not to many many and then 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 promise to shut up so what happens what is the future shock security i would argue and this is from the book i had mentioned that i had written uh, we need to sort of <coughs> think about climate in security terms but not all climate is security in a way in the book i have this framework okay? security is about two things security is about what is the source of insecurity why am i insecure kisi ne mujhe mara मैं इनसिक्योर हो गया लेकिन मे बी इट इज ऑल्सो सोशल डिसप्शन नो वन हिट्स मी फिजिकली बट कंडीशन आर क्रिएटेड दैट मेक्स मी इनसिक्योर राइट सो वन डायमेंशन इज सोर्स द अदर डायमेंशन इज 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 अ स्केल फ्रॉम स्टेट बेस्ड टू सोसाइटी बेस्ड राइट अगेन वेरी ब्रीफली आई आई जस्ट पुट द फोर बाय फोर दैट माई बुक वॉज बेस्ड ऑन इफ यू थिंक अबाउट स्टेट एंड वायलेंस राइट सिक्योरिटी इज स्टेट लेवल वायलेंस दैट इज वॉट वॉर इज सो वॉर इज क्लियरली an insecurity problem right i don't need to convince any one of that but we also know that we have now lived for nearly half a century where more people have died in civil strife violence but at a society level not a state level and that is also clearly about insecurity right so coming from insecurity to me what is interesting is not ki wo pehle wale nahi hai but on the right side of this diagram social disruption at state level leads to insecurity there is a reason maine us bachche ki tasveer lagayi hai with load shedding load shedding creates actual insecurity for photoshop copy ki dukan wale ke liye uski livelihood change ho rahi hai na usne ya zyada paise lagane hai ya kam paise banane or and so on so forth and finally what dr mehboobul haq would always say the human security aspect which is social disruption at society level so the point is not ke security ye sirf hai upar wali point is ke security is also the upper wala war for climate is unlikely civil strife for climate you are already seeing right paul collier says ke jo aapki uh, rwanda wali uh, genocide ki movement thi at least part of it 
was 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 movement because of water and 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 resources i'll i'll show you something on that in a minute institutional failure mere khayal mein to aa chuka hai as 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 with that let me because of time rush through these last ones i'm sorry iski thodi si off ho gayi should be nature at the bottom but when we think of climate and 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 security uh, climate and adaptation one of the things we should think about is nature right and when we think about nature and climate we usually think wo jo polar bear hota hai is slab pe and i always say ki yaar wo that's the wrong picture it gives you the sense as if nature is waiting ki aap aake usko bacha lenge maine polar bear se baat ki hai char panch se they are not waiting unko koi itbar nahi hai nature hits back that's what nature does hamari tarah mujhe koi mare to main ekdam wapas marta hu and that is what nature does ecosystems hit back and therefore the better picture of climate and security is this guy i'm sorry wo uski wo alignment galti ho gayi that's the dengue mosquito there is a reason why dengue is moving northwards both in the mediterranean and here in south asia now, partly because we travel hum jute ke saath leke jate hain pathogens and so on so forth but the mosquito is also adapting right so vector borne disease and the movement of vector borne disease becomes becomes a major thing uh, my most important issue for climate and and adaptation uh, is what i would argue ke water is to climate uh, water is to adaptation what carbon was to mitigation these are maps that i will show you very quickly that i had made in the 2010 floods the 2022 floods are not actually slightly smaller technically uh, but they are not different uh, i was in the us trying to raise support for money and so on so forth and i was finding it very difficult to explain to people ke flood pakistan mein uska matlab kya hota hai आजकल उन्हें नजर आ रहे हैं अगर आप आजकल वाली तस्वीरें देखें ने स्पेन वगैरह की सो आई पुट दैट ब्लू एरिया ऑन अ मैप ऑफ पाकिस्तान इज द एरिया दैट वाज कवर्ड बाय द फ्लड राइट नाउ दिस हैज अ इफ यू आर थिंकिंग एनडीएम एंड नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट अथॉरिटी इफ यू आर थिंकिंग रिलीफ दैट्स द एरिया यू आर वर्किंग इन राइट सो दैट लाइट ब्लू एंड डार्क ब्लू को जरा ज़हन में रखिए दैट स्क्विगल आई विल टेक दैट स्क्विगल टू स्केल आई पुट इट ऑन अ मैप ऑफ द यूएस राइट दिस वाज द वाव मोमेंट फॉर देम मैं यार हमारा फ्लड इज नॉट कि बेसमेंट में पानी आ गया दैट्स द फ्लड फ्रॉम वर्मोंट टू फ्लोरिडा आई पुट इट ऑन अ मैप ऑफ जापान यू कैन सी जापान आई पुट इट ऑन अ मैप ऑफ द यूरोप ऑफ यूरोप डेनमार्क टू फ्रांस नाउ यू हैव टू इमेजिन अ वर्ल्ड वेयर दिस इज हैपनिंग इन टेन कंट्रीज इफ यू सी योर फेसबुक टुडे जैसी पाकिस्तान की तस्वीरें थी वैसी तस्वीरें आ रही हैं स्पेन से वैसी तस्वीरें आ रही हैं वर्मोंट से मैं इस हफ्ते की बात कर रहा हूँ वैसी तस्वीरें आ रही हैं नेपाल से वैसी तस्वीरें आ रही हैं इंडिया से सो टू एक्सपेक्ट के नेचुरल डिजास्टर में बाकी सारे आके हमें पैसे देना शुरू कर देंगे इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन दैट्स व्हाई द थिंग दैट वाज मेंशन लिविंग इन दिस दैट आई वाज पार्ट ऑफ कि वी शुड थिंक आर पाकिस्तानी इशू एंड स्टार्ट विद द इंडस एंड गुड न्यूज ऑन दैट येस्टडे एक्चुअली दिस इज डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ न्यूज वी सिक्योर्ड ग्रांट फंडिंग फॉर सेवेंटी मिलियन डॉलर फॉर समथिंग कॉल्ड रिचार्ज पाकिस्तान Uh, to recharge the aquifers i hope it is also used right uh, but the idea again is if you are dealing with climate then you have to deal with water right because water is the front line issue where this will happen um if you are talking water you are immediately talking food right because what is food except nature's way of transporting water i'll move on energy we all understand but what we don't understand is that the energy problem for climate is not just electric vehicles my point to my colleagues outside in developed countries is ki hamara problem to energy poverty hai right so we have to solve those two problems together cleaner energy but for people who don't have energy whose energy has to grow right and that is where so mujhe pehle problem ki fikr nahi hai that that transition is already happening the price of solar and wind is going down therefore deployment is going up but the new energy security it includes the energy poverty of about 2 and a half billion people in the world same with mobility again i won't go into it in detail but mobility is not just tesla the mobility problem for about again a half billion and a half people in the world is moving large numbers of people large number of distances particularly for 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 dignity uh, let me as i wrap up i will uh, go through some of these i'll just put the last two because then i want to take questions heat is a particular problem we are the front line even more than plants of heat when i was growing up karachi had four seasons char mausam hote the ab panch hai 
The fifth season is extreme heat. I can tell you when it will come. I will tell you exactly how many people will die. And it is a totally solvable problem. Right? Eight years in a row, we have extreme heat. If that's not a security issue, what is? Right? And the answers on this one are simple. It's hydration, pani, and green. Right? Because everyone who's dying, the pictures you see, this is for cities in Karachi, that, that, that in Pakistan. I, I won't go into the details, but you can see the direction of the graph in each page. But the point is that the pictures we are seeing, we should not be seeing. These are all pictures from the Pakistan heat wave, above average, easily solvable. And this is, again, if you are interested in security as the security of people, we should not be seeing these pictures. Right? This is basically the uh, center may uh, unclaimed bodies that eventually will be put in uh, uh, trenches. Because most people who will die in the heat wave will be homeless people or street people, migrants who didn't right? uh, have Same in refugee. When I talk about the, in, 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 the, in Europe especially, this is the one that, that gets the most attraction. And I point out to them, I, I was giving a talk at the humanitarian summit on the day this Greek ship happened. So you can imagine that this was biggest on people's mind. But when we think of refugees, we think of things like this or the Greek ship. Right? But when you think of climate migration, it is not just that. It is people losing their livelihood. Yes, the Green Revolution may work up. And therefore, they move out. The best example to me is Sundarban in what was East Pakistan, what is Bangladesh. Sundarban, there's a micro-millimeter change in salt water and fresh water. Right? It's a change. That change, ki se, the Sundarban communities that do shrimp farming can no longer get to the shrimp in the old boat. That makes... Thousands of young people unemployed. They move to Chittagong, from Chittagong probably to, uh, to India, to Brussels, to wherever. Right? So climate migration is livelihood migration. I'll, I'll put one map again because I have such a great audience. This is a map from Africa. That's Sierra Leone, that's Guinea. If you see at the bottom, that's why it's called the parrot's beak. Uski parrot ki si nazarari. Right? Keep a focus on the date, January 6, 1974. And where Guinea is written. I will fast forward the map to December 1999. What do you think happened? This is also on the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. A war happened. Where did the war happen? The war happened in Sierra Leone. Where did the environmental impact happen? It happened in Guinea because people are smart. They don't want to be in a war. So they move out of it. When they move out of it, there's pressure in this case on the forest, etc. Right? So we have to think about it differently. As I end, right? Does anyone know this picture? It's a beautiful picture. Pakistan is a beautiful country. This is about Atabad Lake, right? Atabad Lake is beautiful, especially when we go to the house, 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 I, I, I hope I'm still amongst friends. I've taken too long, but I hope I'm still there. Till 2010, there was no Atabad Lake. There was no lake. There was no lake. Right? Not entirely climate change because this was a glacial fall. Luckily, there was no lake. But there was no lake. The question is this. If you have a village in Pakistan and an enemy country takes and the village is no more, would that not be a security issue? And in this case, nature does it, or our actions to nature does it, and our reaction is Instagram ki tasveer lal lal lal. So that to me is the type of sort of thinking we need to apply to this. Absolute last slide, what do we do? I don't have recommendations, but I do have, and this was presented to the UN, that's why I'm putting this up. Um, of what we might need to do differently. First, we need to move from re reactive posture to preventative posture. Again, as in COVID, right? The science proved we could have actually solved it for much less if we had acted earlier. This is not a war you prepare for. This is the war you avoid. 
And that is why a disaster relief approach is not the only right approach. We move from maximizing security or only from thinking about maximizing security, which is what essentially the European posture on climate change is. Let us make our cities livable, the 2050 approach, to minimizing insecurity. We move from thinking of development as a problem to thinking of development as a solution. And we move from thinking of national costs, how much will I have to pay to that 100 billion, to thinking about global benefits. I am really, really thankful for the opportunity. I am really sorry for taking much longer than I was supposed to. But uh, thank, you for, thank you for having me. What about Shukla? Dr. Adil, thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a wonderful talk. And on behalf of uh, all the attendees, I, I would say that again, that it was a wonderful talk. And that is the reason. Because I'll request in this question answer session, please, uh, I have thanked him on your behalf. So just please ask your questions. And they should be short questions so that we can have maximum number of questions. And I'll try to club four questions together so that uh, we, we have the answers for those. So now we can start. Uh, I think I'll start with the Ekwar Khalid Banuri. He was the person instrumental in uh, helping me to get to Dr. Adil. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure listening to you. Um, such an intellectually sharp, but also very deeply, sadly reflective uh, presentation. Um, I'm just, since a lot of references have been made to social media, I am struck by a recent tweet that I saw, and I would, my question is related to that. Uh, there was a tweet recently that uh, said,